and welcome to your Rhino tutorial. And in this tutorial, I want to talk about building a propeller. And we're going to start off by creating some layers. The first layer, we're going to double click here and change the name to Profile Curves. Oops. Take off Caps Lock. and press the enter key on the keyboard and I'm going to keep the default color I like that and uh, layer 2 I'm going to uh, double click on that and I'm going to change that name to cross sections and press the enter key on the keyboard and I'm going to create one more and we're going to call it Propeller Blade Surface. And once again, hit the Enter key on the keyboard, and I'm going to change the color. That was a left click. And I think I'm going to change it to a grayish blue color here. No, that too much matches the background. Change it to a, a little bit more greenish gray color. And left click. And now I'm ready to draw. As soon as I change the uh, current layer back to profile curves, I'm ready to draw them using the control point curve command. And I'm going to double click on the front viewport here and make sure that ortho is off as well as snap and any of the uh, on snaps are off so I'm going to left click here and begin drawing my profile curve for how I want my propeller to look I'm going to put a little bit of taper on it there and left click and hit the enter key on the keyboard to finish it off now I am going to turn on the end snap and ortho and I'm going to go up here to transform mirror there's the end snap and there's the ortho and now we are mirrored one more thing to do here while we're at this is to no, because I need to change layers before I do that. Let's change layers to cross sections. I'm going to put a mark there. And left click. And now cross sections is our current layer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a point right up here with end snap on. So that it is right in the middle where, where the two profile curves come together and now I'm going to go back to the four curve viewport and zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to draw my first cross section curve which is going to be an ellipse I'm going to turn off end snap so I don't snap to the top of the propeller I'm going to left click and it's going to be about that wide another left click and I'm going to come out until I see it touch the uh, profile curve here. And then I'm going to left click again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this curve towards the top of the propeller a few times. And then I'm going to adjust the size of the copies. So let's go to transform and copy with ortho still turned on and we're going to make some copies here put one in the middle and uh, a couple more up at the top hit the enter key on the keyboard now I'm going to go through and I'm going to use the scale 1D command 
and in turn I'm going to select each of the cross sections and I'm going to scale it out until it's touching the profile curves in the front view. I'll zoom in here so we can see a little bit better what we're doing. Left click to select the curve, go to transform scale 1D. When it asks for the origin point we're going to click right in the middle here where the green line is. That's a left click going to go out here a ways to select the scale factor and left click again and then keep moving it out to the right and when it is touching on both sides left click and uh, go to the next one left click it and to bring up the previous command we're going to right click and that brings up the scale 1d command again and again it's asking for the origin point which we're going to place in the middle we're going to come out here and place the second scale factor somewhere somewhere out here the second point that we select and then we're going to move it out till we're touching the profile curve and then we're going to left click we're going to go on to the next profile or the next cross section left click on it right click to bring up the scale 1d command again left click for the origin point right or left click for the uh, reference point and then drag it out again till it touches the profile curves and this one is uh, a little wonky we're a little bit uh, more on one side than the other so I'm just gonna click and drag it over a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and scale it again transform scale scale 1d left click left click and I'm gonna bring it in a hair and adjust it till it looks like it's touching them both about equally and go to the next one left click to select it and that's the drill <laughs> all the way to the top right click brings the scale 1d command again left click gets your origin point left click gets your first reference point then drag it out until it touches the profile curves and left click again left click to select it right click to bring up the scale 1d command left click for the origin point left click for the first reference point and left click when it touches the profile curves now we've got all our curves in place that we need for a sweep to rails command so that's exactly what we're going to initiate here and we're going to end up with one fat propeller short fat propeller I'll probably have to adjust some curves in a minute but I'm going to go ahead and do a two rail sweep with what we've got here anyways there's one rail there's two rails cross-section curve starting at the bottom first second third fourth fifth sixth and the point at the top press down the inner keyboard key and it's asking us to adjust the curve seams and because the curve seams are all pointing exactly in the same direction it's what we want to look for anyways so we're going to hit the enter key and accept that I am going to build this using do not simplify so we don't add a bunch of points I'm gonna go OK and I'm gonna make this a shaded viewport so we can see what we've got going here zoom in with the middle mouse wheel and except for this this little bulge down here it kinda looks pretty good and uh, some propellers actually have a bit of that so you could get away with that and it would probably look perfectly fine but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the surface turn on the points and I'm going to move some control points to try and uh, even this out just a little bit here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a marquee around those two points, hold down the shift key, and then draw a marquee around those two. 
I'm going to go back up to transform scale 1D I'm going to left click to establish what's wrong transform scale 1D origin point is a left click for the origin go out here left click again for the scale factor and I'm going to draw these in till they're about in line with the point below it now I'm going to select those three holding down the shift key I'm going to select those three I'm going to right click to bring up the scale 1D command again left click for the origin point left click to establish the reference point then I'm going to drag them in line with the ones that are just about above and below that and I'm going to turn the points off and uh, see what we've got here and that's slightly more acceptable to me I'm going to go up here and I'm going to have a look at what my uh, render settings are see what my mesh settings are and they are jagged and faster so I'm going to change them to smooth and slower which will even out the settings a little bit and I'm going to go with that exactly like that is right there but let's have a look at this big fat propeller blade we've got here now <coughs> we can go ahead and twist this but uh, I don't like big fat propeller blades so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another scale 1D and I'm going to select the surface I'm going to go to transform scale 1D and I'm going to left click for the origin left click for the reference point and then I'm going to make the prop nice and skinny like a propeller should be. The other thing that I could have done is I could have gone back and, and changed all my curves that I used as cross-section curves. I could have scale one d them down to make the whole thing thinner. So, having said that, I'm going to highlight the surface. I'm going to go over here to layers. I'm going to say this is my current layer I'm going to close out layers and then I'm going to go to edit layers change object to current layer and now I'm going to go back to the layer manager and I'm going to turn off the other layers by clicking on the light bulb so the only thing I have is the propeller blade surface now I'm going to select the propeller blade surface and in the command line I'm going to type in twist hit the enter key on the keyboard and the start of the twist axis is going to be at the bottom of the propeller blade the end is going to be at the top of the propeller blade and the angle or first reference point is going to be right there now I'm going to have to turn off ortho left click on that to turn it off and then now you can see this is controlling the amount of twist on the propeller blade and it looks best if you don't put an extreme amount of twist on it let's uh, try that see what that looks like I'm going to hold down the shift key while I move the viewport around a little bit left click to deselect it and I think that looks pretty good as far as a propeller blade goes and that's going to be the end of this tutorial.